I never thought I would use the expression, but please pinch me because I think I am dreaming. Kotaku, of all places, Kotaku is complaining that Call of Duty Vanguard is too woke. Get the fuck out of it. No, this is not real. This is a poll website. No, it is real. I checked it. Do they run out of things to complain about? Did they get bored and now they're like, you know what? Let's play for the other team for a bit. What is going on here? What is happening? I mean, when Battlefield was uh, doing World War II and people were complaining, Kotaku was like, no, 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 misogyny, misogyny. But all of a sudden, it's like, oh, did the, the people from Activision forget to pay money to Kotaku to give good reviews? What is going on? What is happening? I want to know. Like, something is off. Something is rotten in Denmark. Is it because of the lawsuit at Activision Blizzard? And now the entire company is tainted. Because of that, Kotaku is like, okay, you know what? We can actually say what we want to say. Because no one is going to defend this company. So, what did they expect? I mean, apparently one of the writers, this is something that I didn't know, but one of the writers is a woman who went famous for saying that she literally got raped in GTA. I, I, I just I just want to put that out there. Just just putting it out there. Like, that. that is one of the writers. So, <laughs> apparently they're saying that the original Call of Duty released 18 years ago was a game that gave a shit about the Second World War. To play it today, and you should... It's an experience, uh, it's to experience fear, disorgan disorganization, confusion, and horror. A bunch of barely trained teenagers are thrown into a situation beyond their comprehension, trying not to be killed by another bunch of barely trained teenagers, and its first sequel remains an extraordinary depiction of the horror of war. And this is what I want to say. This, this is why my criticism to Call of Duty Vanguard, right? They chose the setting of World War II. Now, I don't mind the fact that they've decided to create something else that didn't happen. But what they're doing is fiction. And reality would create a better story than fiction. Like, it's fiction for Christ's sake. You can make anything and you could make it a more interesting story. But instead, what you decided to do was to make a boring, bland, filled with Hollywoodian tropes story. When the actual story from the war, like if you actually take a book, or hell, just play Call of Duty World at War, and you will see just how much better the story is. You, you will see how more immersive and how more emotional the story is. And it makes you realize, wow, war is really bad. I, I don't know what my grandparents went through, but I am so glad I don't happen to live during those days. But you know what? The ones that managed to do it, they're heroes. I mean, yeah, the, no wonder they have monuments raised in their name. But when you play the, the this Call of Duty, and this is Kotaku saying it, not me, you get to play for six hours following some impossibly elite NPCs through an in, increasingly tight genetic corridors. Just so you can understand, like, the character I was playing, the female sniper, right? If you haven't watched my Let's Play... She was carrying an MG42 with one hand. Those things are 10.5 kilograms. And that's on top of the other gear that she was having. So she also had grenades on her ammunition and, on, and another weapon. And she was able to use all of this and sprint. And she could fire the MG42 from the hip. Not even Rambo could do that. And she could climb walls with the speed of Spider-Man. And she had regenerative abilities. Now, look. I understand it's a video game, all right? But I think Call of Duty World at War did it better. Like, it didn't have to do all of these Hollywoodian tropes in order to make a good game. And you actually got to feel immersed. It actually felt like you're in a war. This, this is just rubbish. Absolute rubbish. So, I just want to point out that even towards the end of the article... They're making fun of progressivism. Again, this is Kotaku. Things uh, venture more daringly when it comes to sexismus. Because of course they do. The female character, a Russian sniper, gets to say, Because I'm a woman, most of the time she gets a line. And here the game is so brave as to put some of the misogyny into the mouths of her teammates. Sorry, not mouth, mouth, the Australian one. Because we all know that a bit like that, eh? 
When was Kotaku when uh, Supergirl came out? Like literally in the first episode, there's like at least five or six times where people reference the fact that she's a woman. And I remember it quite vividly because it's one of the most dumbest things that I have ever seen in entertainment ever. So you have Supergirl and she's fi fighting against this alien bounty hunter and she's getting her ass whooped. I mean, the guy is mopping the floor with her. And there's one person asking, saying like, she can't do it. And immediately is cut off. Why? Because she's a woman. And I'm like, no, motherfucker, because people are watching the battle. Like, she's getting beaten. Like, it's, it's in your face. What the fuck? So <laughs> it's, it's pretty much like that. It's pretty much like that that's here. But, but what, what's also interesting, and this is even fa more fascinating, right? I mean, it's Kotaku, so you kind of get the type of people that read Kotaku. And I'm listening to this, and not a single person is disagreeing with Kotaku. Like, what is up with all these lemmings? So if Kotaku would have made an article saying that Call of Duty has the best campaign ever, very progressive, very diverse, uh, every single other game should be like this, Everyone in the comment section would probably be like, yeah, 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 only misogynists hate this game, only racists hate this game, yeah, yeah. But when Kotaku does the opposite, then they're like, look, this is too much. Like, this is just bad. Like, no, like, you shouldn't do this. You go into the comment section and everyone is like, oh, yeah, I agree. Or, or you have some people go like, you know what, the gameplay is actually good, the visuals are good. And by the way, I agree. I agree with that assessment. The AI is great, I keep saying it, like, the gameplay is fun. I just don't think that... This should be a World War II game. I mean, it's... Even the weapons don't feel like World War II. I mean, the weapons with World War II should be single-shot bolt-action rifles, which focus a lot of skill, because if you miss, you have to reload. Or, um, <clears throat> submachine guns. Like, things that are fully automatic, they're really good at close range, but at long range, they're very inaccurate. That's what I would have liked to see in a World War II setting. That, that's how it would be different... Then the other Call of Duties. Like, if you have a World War One or a World War Two game, then it should be like very long distance battle that are filled with the skill of the player, you know, trying to aim precisely. And when you get in close range, you, you switch to your fully automatic weapons. Fully semi-automatic. That, that's what I would have loved to see. But unfortunately, we don't get to see that. It's just another Call of Duty that's a reskin that looks like World at War. And, and the guns in multiplayer, they have attachments that I, I, I don't even think they're from that era. Like, I'm not a historian when it comes to guns, but they look way too futuristic for me. It's, and genetic on top of that. I, I'm really surprised they haven't gone with the laser attachment at this point. Just just put a laser on it. Just put a laser on that MG42, because why not? Put a laser point. Put a pointer so the soldier can play with the cats on the battlefield while there's no action going on. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.